Hello everybody. Today I would like to talk about the main issues of uh, cable transmission versus traditional overhead line transmission. The main difference between an air insulated overhead line and a cable is the insulation media. Whereas in air insulation you have a lot of space between the conductor and ground. In a cable you want to minimize the size of the cable and therefore you have to replace the air insulation by means of a polyethylene insulation media. The polyethylene insulation changes the characteristics of the cable. That means it massively increases the capacitance of the cable compared to the overhead line. Let's build a model of the transmission line first and compare it to the model of the cable later. So the transmission line is a series connection of LC circuits. The R part of the circuit is relatively small. Typically in a transmission line, you have maybe a length reactance of 0.8 millihenry per kilometer, whereas the capacitance is 14 nanofarad per kilometer. These are typical values. The surge impedance of such a transmission line is typically 240 ohms for 380 kV. And the speed, the propagation speed of a wave inside the transmission line is close to the speed of light. Looking at the cable now, we observe that first of all, the length reactance is close to the same. Uh, instead of 0.8, it's 0.62. But looking at the capacitor, here we see that instead of 14 nanofarad per kilometer, we have 250 meaning that the uh, surge impedance has been reduced from 240 ohms to 50 ohms and the velocity of a uh, traveling wave inside the cable has been reduced from close to light speed down to 30 percent more or less of speed of light. Here I have a model of a transmission line, here I have a model of a cable. In the transmission line you can see the step response. Here you have the input voltage of the transmission line, this is here, and here you have the output voltage of the transmission line and you see the time delay. This is because of the speed of the traveling wave inside the transmission line from one end to the other. And here in the second case you have the cable and you see that the time needed for traveling along the whole cable is much longer, even though the cable is also 30 kilometers. So, the second thing you can also observe is that the current in the transmission line as step response current is much uh, lower uh, than in case of a cable. So this is transmission line, this is cable current. Let's assume that the maximum current in the 380 kV cable would be 1000 amps. And let's have a look at what happens if I operate this cable at various lengths. Let's start with 30 km. Here I still have my traditional transmission line and you can see that for 30 kilometers the output voltage of the transmission line is equal to the input voltage to the source voltage, meaning there is no Ferranti effect visible for 30 kilometers. For the cable, however, I have already Ferranti effect. You see that at 30 kilometers my output voltage is significantly higher than my source voltage. To be precise, it's more than 9% higher and this would have to be compensated already. The cable charging current, this is the green curve, you can see that it is uh, well below the limit. It is close to 300 amps. Let's add a reactor in order to compensate the capacitive current. The reactor should now be optimized for no load conditions. That means my output resistance is very high. I have virtually no load. And then I need to optimize the reactor so that my over voltage due to the Ferranti effect disappears. So this would be the case as soon as the reactor is around 1.4 Henry. Another issue I have to watch is harmonics. Typically in cable networks you have a tendency that harmonics are amplified and uh, the common harmonics in typical networks is a third harmonic, fifth harmonics and higher up. So let's make a test with the third harmonics. I have now added a third harmonic source. It's 1% of nominal and you can see that at the input of the cable I have already a significant disturbance of the current. However, the voltage at the end of the cable is not yet disturbed. With a frequency scan I can see that the resonant frequency of a 30 km cable is around about between 170 and 180 Hz. So let's increase now the cable length until I have a resonance. I have now increased the length of the cable from 30 to 44 kilometers and now you see that at the end of the cable I get the heavy resonance of the third harmonics. 
and this would have to be mitigated by means of filters. So this is quite tricky to operate such a cable with a, such a high risk of resonance. Let's now move to 100 km. Leaving the resonance topic for a while, I have now increased the cable length to 100 km and you can see that I have already 50% over voltage at the cable end without compensation. And you can also see on the green curve that the capacitive charging current of the cable is already by far exceeding maximum permissible current in the cable, which is 1000 amps. We have here reached already 1300 amps effective. To compensate such long cables, it is better to put reactors at both ends of the line because then you are less sensitive to variations of the source impedance. So I have added two 200 MVA reactors at the cable ends. 200 MVA is for three phase. You can see now that the voltage at the cable end uh, is not higher anymore than nominal. The charging current is below the maximum current, it's 450 amps, so we have still some room for the load currents. In total, I cannot exceed 1000 amps continuous. And also the third harmonic source does not have an impact on the voltage. Let's now further increase the cable length to 180 kilometers. With 180 kilometer cable length, I need to have heavy compensation at both cable ends. For the traditional transmission line, however, I'm still within the limits tolerated without compensation. I would, what you can also see is that the charging current of the power line is uh, still pretty small. This is the green curve here, whereas the charging current of the cable, even compensated, is already reaching the maximum limit tolerated. So there is very, very little room for additional load current in the cable. If I'm looking at the frequency scan, I see that with increasing, with increasing cable length, all kind of harmonics start to pop in. Here I'm very close to the fifth harmonics. Let's see if this has an impact here. You see that the fifth harmonics has a huge impact on the voltage at both ends, at the load end and at the source end of the cable. And it is very difficult to operate cables at, this, at these lengths uh, with all the harmonics popping in and there is a risk of damages sooner or later. When you plan cable connections, uh, there, are rec there are some recommendations here. The recommendation four may be important. If you have very long cable connections, we have seen that you are reaching the current capacity limit of the cable. So if you want to increase the margin for, for loads, for higher loads, you may have to decrease the transmission voltage of the cable in order to reduce the charging currents and so leave more rooms for load currents. There is a relation between the power transmission capacity of cable in function of their length. These curves are from a paper, the link is here. To get your hands on the topic, I recommend learning by doing. Go and visit the simulator under this address here.